If you've been looking for digital products to sell online, but have been hesitating on starting to create them because maybe you don't feel techy enough or you don't feel super confident when it comes to graphic design skills, then using AI tools may just be what you need. In the last few years, so many different amazing artificial intelligence tools have been made accessible to all of us, making it easier than ever to create digital products to sell to make money online. I absolutely love selling digital products as opposed to physical products because number one, when you sell digital products, you have a much higher profit margin, meaning that you're likely to keep and profit more of what you actually earn in revenue as opposed to what you get when you sell physical products. The reason for this is because when you sell physical products, you have a lot of overhead costs, including having to buy inventory, packaging materials and costs, shipping costs, all of that is eliminated when you sell online and you sell digital products. And reason number two why I love selling digital products is because it can become a passive income. Passive income can be made when you create something once and then you set it up to sell on its own on repeat over and over again, almost like it's selling on autopilot. There is a little bit of upfront active work in the beginning when you're creating the product, but once you have it created and listed, there's very little active work at that point on your end to fill orders. This makes a digital products business much more scalable in the fact that you can continue to create these types of passive products and continue to make sales while not having to trade your time for dollars like you're doing when you sell physical products or with a service-based business. There are a lot of different types of digital products that can make thousands of dollars a month, like this one, for example, that I found when I was researching on Etsy. This is a listing for a digital custom watercolor pet portrait that has an average monthly revenue of over $10,000. Now think about the fact that this is just one single listing. Can you imagine having a whole shop full of these types of listings that are making this type of profit? Now you can create these types of products purely from scratch if you want, but I'm a big fan of using these AI tools to help cut down on the time that it takes you and streamline the product process. So that's why in today's video, I'm going over the top seven digital products that you can use AI tools to create and sell online. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into digital product type number one, which is clip art or graphic elements sell really well online for people who are creating designs of all different types, or even wanting to purchase these digital clip art files to print out and use as a physical product. Usually you'll see clip art selling as a bundle or a package that's based around a specific topic or theme. So for instance, you could have an animal themed bundle of clip art images or you could sell something around a certain holiday like Easter or St. Patrick's Day or Christmas. The options really are endless when it comes to topics and themes for this. So for our example today, I'm gonna to be creating some Christmas clip art to sell. So the AI tool I'm gonna to be using to do this is on Kittle and everything I use today in these demonstrations is gonna be linked in the video description if you're interested in trying any of this. You can try out Kittle for free and when you come to Kittle, you'll just come to create a new project. You'll choose the size that you wanna start your project as and you can even choose what DPI you want if you want to increase the resolution. So once I'm here on my project, I can come over here to the left where it says Kittle AI and Kittle has an image generator which is super helpful because you can choose which style you like. So they have one that's called clip art style. So maybe I'll come here and under the clip art style, I'll choose the one that says cartoon. And then I'm gonna give it a prompt. So this is where the AI magic comes in is when I give it a prompt, it's going to take what I write out as text and turn it into an image. So for my prompt, I'm just gonna say a Christmas tree. I wanna keep it simple in the beginning and I can always make it more complicated or detailed as I need to. I'm gonna to click to generate the image. And here is my cute little Christmas tree clip art that the Kittle AI generated for me. So if I like this, I can continue with my design by sizing it the right way and changing it up however I like. Or if I don't like this, I can always choose to generate a different image using the same prompt or even change my prompt to be more specific to what I want. So for instance, this put a little smiley face in the middle. If I didn't want that, I could come back to my prompt and change that a little bit to specify that I don't want a face inside the Christmas tree. But let's say I like this, it's super cute. So I'm gonna size it the right way. And once I'm ready to download this, I can simply come up here to the top right where it says download. I've got a lot of different download options, including what file type I want to download this as. So a lot of times clip art will come in a PNG file type, but I can also click to remove the background to make sure it has a transparent background, which is normally what people want with their clip art. So I'm gonna have a transparent PNG and I click to download that. And now I've got that downloaded as its own file and I can continue to do this with different Christmas themed clip art. So I might generate some other clip art images of things like stockings or holly berries and sell all of these together as a bundle. Now, one quick note here for using all of these different AI tools and even for selling on platforms like Etsy, let's say, you wanna make sure that you're abiding by the licenses for all of these different tools and platforms that you're using. So for instance, if I'm creating an AI image for commercial purposes to sell this as a product using Kittle, I just wanna make sure that I read through Kittle's license to make sure that it allows for commercial usage in the way that I'm thinking of using this to sell. Every platform has a different license that specifies different uses that 
that you're allowed to do with their license. So just make sure you read through thoroughly the license of whatever platforms you end up using to make sure that you're doing this completely legally and you're not gonna get in trouble for any kind of copyright strike or anything like that. Most of them do allow some type of usage of the images that you end up generating using their AI tools, but you just wanna make sure that you're aware of what those terms are before you start selling these as digital products. Now we're about to move on to digital product type number two, but before we do, I need to let you know that if you are interested in selling digital products, I have a free gift for you today. It's my free digital product starter guide that's linked below and you can download that guide and get started on the right foot when it comes to creating and selling digital products online. I know how intimidating and confusing things like sizing and aspect ratio and file types can be, especially if you're just starting out. And that's why I put together this guide to help you as you begin your journey to really break it down and make it simple and clear exactly what certain file types are used for to give you lots of different ideas for digital products that you could sell, talking about the different options for your creation software and what's best to use for which types of digital products and a lot of other great information. So definitely check that out. The link is in the description box below. Totally free to download for you. So definitely go ahead and grab that to make this process super simple. Okay, our next product is a printable checklist or a tracker. There are all different types of these printable products. And most of them, again, are specific to a certain niche or target customer. So if you go on Etsy and search for something like this, you might find everything from a wedding planning checklist to a fitness habit tracker. These are easy and simple for people to purchase and instantly download and print out to use on whatever journey they're looking to get some help with. So if you're interested in creating this type of product, the first thing you could do is use an AI tool called ChatGPT. So I'm here on ChatGPT and what ChatGPT can do for you is generate ideas in the form of text from a prompt that you would give it. So it's literally a back and forth conversation with this AI tool where you can ask it for ideas, you can brainstorm, you can get help in terms of coming up with the content that you're going to include in your checklist. So let's go with the idea of a fitness habit tracker. So I could type into ChatGPT, I want to create a printable tracker for people interested in fitness. What goals regarding fitness would someone want to track to measure their success? And then ChatGPT goes ahead and gives me a whole list of different ideas for this. So it's telling me people might want to track things like weight loss or gain, body measurements, physical activity, steps taken, calories burned, nutrition, hydration, sleep. And it goes on with a whole list. And I can continue if I want more ideas and I could ask it, give me 10 more ideas. And ChatGPT will go ahead and continue giving me more ideas. So not all of these might be the right fit for what I'm wanting to create, but this is a great way to brainstorm and think of some things that I might not have come up with before to include in my checklist or tracker. So then I would take these ideas, the ones I want to include and go ahead and put them together in a list. And the next step would be to come over to Canva, which is a free design software. You can have a Canva free plan. You can also upgrade to a Canva pro plan. The pro gives you some extra really cool features and content, but you can totally do everything you need on the Canva free plan. So when I'm on Canva, I'm going to actually create my checklist. So I'll come to create a design and I can choose what size project I want to create. And really it's up to you. I would say a lot of times checklists and trackers come into standard US letter size, which is eight and a half by 11 inches. So that's what I'm going to create mine in. So at this point inside of Canva, you would start to add your text, things like a header, and whatever other content you would want to create in here. You might do a chart or a graph of some sort. You might do text with check boxes. But again, it's great to get inspiration from what's already selling really well in the market and put your own twist on it to make it exactly what you want. When you're done creating that, you could just come up here and click share and you're gonna download this file. Again, you can choose a file type just like we could on Kittle, but here specifically for a checklist or a tracker of this sort, you would want to probably choose PDF standard or print. If it's supposed to be a printable, PDF print is gonna give you the best quality. Quality. Okay, our next digital product we're going to talk about is an ebook or a resource guide. Ebooks sell super well as digital products online and serve as a source of information for people wanting to learn specific things. So if there's anything that you're interested in or that you know about that you could teach on or a specific target customer that you have that you're willing to learn about, then you can create a really helpful ebook for that person or on that topic that you're wanting to teach on. So for instance, let's say I want to create an ebook on how to start a small business selling jewelry. I know I want that to be the topic of my ebook, but maybe I need a little bit of help to brainstorm what the bullet points or the things I'm going to be teaching through inside the book are going to be. I could then come back to chat GPT and ask it something like, what would someone wanting to start a small jewelry business need to know? And it's giving me a whole list of things that someone in that category might need to know, like how to do market research, a business plan, legal considerations, supplier relationships. These are all just amazing ideas that could make really good content for this type of ebook. Now, maybe I'm not sure of one of these specific ideas and I need chat GPT to sort of flesh this out a little bit for me so I can know exactly what I'm going to say. For instance, let's take the idea of branding and marketing as one of the bullet points I'm going to teach about 
about, I could then say, what steps would a small business owner take in regards to branding and marketing to get discovered? And ChatGPT is now giving me specifics on that, like defining your brand identity, creating a compelling brand story, developing a professional branding package, and the list goes on. So at this point, I've brainstormed. I've gotten so many great initial ideas. So now I have to actually write out the content for the ebook. So at this point, I can either write it out myself if I want to do that, or I can have ChatGPT actually help me write out this content. In my opinion, it's great to write it out yourself so you can make sure it's exactly how you want it to flow and it's saying what you want it to say. And then you can use ChatGPT even further to help tweak the voice and the feel of how it sounds. So once I've got some text for the ebook written out, I might copy and paste that into ChatGPT and then say, hey, ChatGPT, make this sound more fun or make this sound more professional. Whatever I want the tone to feel like for the ebook, ChatGPT then can rewrite it a little bit for me and help tweak those things to get it just where I want it. Then once I have the whole thing written out, I can actually copy and paste that text into Canva on a US letter size, just like we used for the fitness tracker, that eight and a half by 11 is a great size for eBooks. And once I have it all copied and pasted into Canva, I can add graphic elements or designs into it to give it a really appealing aesthetic vibe. And then once I'm completely done with that, I would download it from Canva again as a PDF print. Then I would use that final PDF file to sell as the final instant download that is my ebook. So when someone purchases it, they don't get a physical book, but they get that PDF file that they can then either just read as a digital file or they could print out on their own. Okay, digital product type number four is printable wall art. These are digital files that people would buy to instantly download and be able to print out on their own to hang up on their wall. This is definitely one of the biggest categories on Etsy when it comes to digital products and one that is definitely in demand currently in the market market and doing really well. So your first step here would be to research what types of wall art, what types of designs are selling really well and are really high in demand. And two of my favorite places to do that are of course on Etsy and Pinterest. And once I've got an idea of what's selling really well and what I would like to create, then I can use Kittle's AI to generate these images. So coming back to Kittle, when I start my project, I can choose what size I want it to be. They've got different presets here, or I can choose a custom width and height. Now, if you're not sure on sizing, definitely download that digital product starter guide linked below that I mentioned because it's got a whole sizing chart aspect ratio chart that you can use specifically for wall art or any type of product that's meant to be printed out to determine what sizes you should offer for different types of products and how to actually resize the same file to be able to offer a bundle of different sizes and aspect ratios. But for this demo, let's just go ahead and choose this poster big size, which is a 24 by 36. And of course, if it's anything that's meant to be printed out, I'm gonna want this DPI, which is the resolution to be a little bit higher the industry minimum is 300 DPI for printables. So I'm gonna change that to 300 and then I can choose the orientation if I want it portrait or landscape and click create. Then again, like we did before, we're gonna come over here to the left where it says Kittle AI and under our same image generator that we used before, remember we used the clip art styles before, but here we can explore image styles and vector styles as well. So if I look under image styles, they've got things like digital art, photography, anime, acrylic, synth wave, psychedelic, and Art Deco. So let's say I'm interested in this Art Deco. I'm gonna choose that as my style. And I can also switch the aspect ratio here if I want a square, which is the one-to-one, -one, or I want a landscape or a portrait aspect ratio. Since my project here is already in a portrait orientation, I'm gonna to switch to that. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in whatever prompt I want. So for this example, let's say mid-century modern sunshine in the city. Click generate. And here is the image that it gave us. So it's definitely an art deco style, mid-century modern sunshine in the city. Super cute, but I'm interested to see what it'll give me if I click to generate this again. So I'm gonna keep that same prompt and just click generate again. And here is the second one that it generated, which is really fun in the same style, just a little bit different of a design here. So let's say I like this first one. I'm going to work with this to format it to my project canvas. If the size is off, I may have to crop a little bit or resize it until I'm happy with the way that it looks. And then when I'm happy with it, I can click to download in whatever file type I want. A lot of times printable wall art will come either in a JPEG or a PNG file. Sometimes it's good to also offer PDF, but this is completely up to me. And I can also change the download size. I can remove the background, optimize the quality. So there's a lot of different great options here. An extra pro tip here for selling printable wall art is that bundles and packages of several different ones that go together sell really 
really well on platforms like Etsy. So let's say I was using this Art Deco Sunshine print. I might offer a bundle of three different ones that are in that same Art Deco mid-century modern feel that all are a little bit different, but they're cohesive and they go together as a set. That way I could sell it for more, raising my average order value and making more profit per sale. All right, our next digital product that we could create using AI is a video workshop or training. Now this is a little bit different because this isn't something that we would necessarily think of to sell on Etsy, but we could sell this to our own audience. And this could be either a live video training we're doing or a pre-recorded training. So with the live option, you would be doing something like a live masterclass or a live training class. And you could actually sell tickets for people to come join you live where you're teaching them on a specific topic, maybe even having a Q&A session, whatever you want to do with it, but you're charging entry for people to come and be part of it live. You can also record that and then sell the recording of it as a pre-recorded training to people who might be interested but not finding you until later. So the first step of this is to think of a topic that you want to train on, something that you feel confident to teach people in, or to think of your ideal person that you'd like to teach. Think about what they need, what their pain points and struggles are, and what you could come up with to create a training class. And this is where the help of AI tools come in, specifically ChatGPT. So if we're on the struggle bus when it comes to figuring out what content we can actually include in our training, we could come to ChatGPT and say something like, I wanna teach a class on the keto diet for people who don't know about it. What are the basic foundational principles they need to know to get started with keto? And here goes ChatGPT giving me ideas again. So things like, what is the keto diet? Macronutrient ratios, foods to eat, foods to avoid benefits of the keto diet, possible side effects. It just continues giving so many great ideas and I can go back and forth with ChatGPT as many times as I want to get this more specific, to have it expand on certain points so that I can really know what I'm talking about going into creating this type of video training. Now, of course, it's always great to take something that you are already knowledgeable about to teach on. So you might use some of your own knowledge and just use ChatGPT to sort of expand that or to help give you some fresh ideas. But regardless, it's a very useful tool that can help you in whatever way you need to create a digital Digital product like this. Now, like I mentioned before, this type of digital product is a little bit different than let's say your printable trackers or printable wall art, like we've been talking about. All of those sell very commonly and regularly on Etsy. Things like video trainings, especially if you're marketing it as a live training, wouldn't be something that you would sell on a platform like Etsy, but that would be something you would market to your own audience that you've built up. Most commonly, this audience would be built on a social media platform or through an email list. So there's a little bit of work up front here in building your audience, but even if you're just starting, you can spread the word to your family and friends and even recruit some brand ambassadors to help spread the word for you and share with their audiences. As you grow your business, you can also grow your audience on social media and grow your email list and use both of those platforms to build your own unique audience that you're selling straight to instead of listing something like this on Etsy. There are a lot of different platforms that you can go live with this type of training on. You could use something like Zoom or StreamYard. And then of course, like I mentioned before, go ahead and record that when you do it so that you can have that recording and sell it as a pre-recorded training. And you would deliver that either as a video file or you could host it in a platform like Kajabi that hosts courses and trainings and things like that. Just a reminder, I have everything I'm mentioning linked below in case you'd like to check out any of these platforms or tools or you're interested in any of them. You can click right through to try them out. All right, moving on to the next digital product type and that is coloring pages. Coloring pages are a really fun and pretty simple digital product to create that are high in demand on platforms like Etsy. So the first step here would again be to go to ChatGPT if you need some ideas. In ChatGPT, I could say something like, I want to create coloring pages for adults. Give me ideas for coloring pages that would appeal to a 30 year old mom. So some ideas it's coming up with are botanical patterns, zen doodles, dreamy landscapes, inspirational quotes, whimsical animals. So the best thing is to get really specific and choose one of these topics to narrow in on and create a whole bundle around that one topic. So I like the idea of botanical patterns. So then I would come over to my AI tool mid journey and use this to generate the actual designs. So Midjourney is similar to ChatGPT in that it's sort of a back and forth messaging tool. But when I come to the mid journey discord server, I'm going to type in backslash, and then the word imagine, which is going to tell it that I'm wanting it to create an image for me. So that's where I'm going to input my prompt after I put that. So my prompt is going to be detailed coloring page with botanicals. I'm also going to add a dash dash AR that stands for aspect ratio. So it knows to create my images in a specific aspect ratio because I'm wanting to eventually make this into a vertical orientation file. So I don't necessarily want a square image because it's gonna be harder to fit onto my eight and a half by 11 project size that I'm gonna to go to next. So because I know that this is eventually gonna be on an eight and a half by 11 size vertical page, I'm gonna tell it to make the aspect ratio three to four. Now, again, if you download that free digital product starter guide, you'll be able to see all the different aspect ratios and what you would use for different types of products. But for this, I wanna use 
three by four as I feel like that'll be the easiest to format into the size page that I want. So that's my prompt and I'm gonna see what it generates for me. All right, so these are the four images it generated for my coloring page. I can click on it to see a little bit larger and you can see how it gave me that three to four aspect ratio. It's a vertical aspect ratio instead of just an even square, but I can then choose which of these I'd like to continue with. So let's say I really like this top right corner. I'm then gonna click underneath to upscale that image. So that's what these U1, U2, U3 options stand for. It stands for upscale one, which is the top left, upscale image two, upscale image three. So this is number two, I'm gonna upscale that one. And there I've got my image that I chose, which I can then click on and right click to save the image. I'm just gonna save this as botanical. And then I can bring that into Canva. So I'm here on Canva, I have already created my eight and a half by 11 size project. I can come to where it says uploads and upload the file that I just downloaded from Mid Journey and then click to bring it over into my project and resize it as I'd like to on this page. And once I have that done, I can then click in Canva to add another page so I can continue in this project to go back and forth between Mid Journey and Canva, bringing in different images that it's creating as my coloring pages. So I can have a whole bundle or a whole list of different coloring pages that go together. And then when I'm finished with that process, I can click to share and download this and again, and choose the file type I want. A lot of times for coloring pages, you might choose JPEG, PNG, or PDF. And moving on to our next digital product, which is a custom photo portrait. These types of portraits are super popular and super high in demand currently on platforms like Etsy. Most of the time you'll see these done for either pets or houses. This is the type of product where the buyer would send the seller a photo of their pet or their house, whatever they want the custom art to be. And then the seller will take that photo that they've gotten from the buyer and use it with an AI tool to create the sort of custom art. I'm gonna actually start by dragging the photo that I want to use of the pet into Mid Journey and uploading it to Mid Journey. I just drag it right into it and it sends it through as a message. And now I'm going to click on that photo that I just sent through to expand it. And I'm gonna right click and then select copy image address. Now I am on a Mac, this might be a little bit different on a PC, but for a Mac, you're gonna click that copy image address and then come back to your main messaging here with Midjourney. Then in my next message, I'm going to again, do the backslash, imagine, select that, and then go where I can enter my prompt. And under the prompt, I'm going to actually right click and paste that link that I just copied from the photo. And then after that, I'm gonna type in whatever style I want it to create this image in. So I might say watercolor in soft, neutral colors. And these are the four images it generated for me. I can see that some of these, the anatomy is a little bit off. So that's what you'll have to sort through a little bit when you're using AI because you want it to look natural, you want it to look professional. So I continued with some different variations of this prompt, which gave me these different images. And I continue just experimenting with this, which gave me these and these, a lot of cute different options. Some of them look more like the original dog than others, but that's just something that you'll have to look at when you're generating these to make sure that the final image does look somewhat like the photo that was provided by the buyer. So let's say I like this first one of the dog here, I could click to upscale this and save that image to then bring into Canva. And once I'm on Canva, of course, I can bring it in as an uploaded photo and create whatever file I want to inside of Canva on whatever size project I'd like for the portrait, adding things like text, I might wanna add the dog's name, or if it's a house, I might wanna add coordinates, but I can make all of those changes and additions in Canva and then download that final file straight from Canva. So there you go, those are the seven digital products that you can create simple and easy using AI tools. Remember, everything is linked in the description box below, as well as that free digital product starter guide. You definitely wanna grab that to get going on your digital product business. It breaks down everything super simple and easy from file types to resolution, aspect ratio, creation software, really everything that you need to know to get going. Happy selling, friends.